Hello and welcome to part three uh, in this uh, series with uh, Dr. Uh, Grady S. McMurtry from Creation uh, Worldview Ministries. And we had asked uh, at the last session, we had introduced a question, Dr. McMurtry, and uh, I'll, I'll go over it again. I'm sure you don't need me to do that, however. Uh, is there any truth that humans evolve from apes? Which leads into this next question, if humans evolve from apes, then why do we still have apes today? Well, okay, let's talk about the first question. Um, I, I sometimes refer to myself as a recovering government school you know, addict. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, obviously I was taught, as I think almost everybody has been, that people evolved from apes. Yeah. Two things. First of all, Charles Darwin actually wrote, we evolved from monkeys. Yes, of course. Now, evolutionists want to say he meant apes, but he may have meant <laughs> apes, but I know what he wrote, and he wrote monkeys. <laughs> Um, that was in his book on Origin of the Species in 1859. Um, so let's think about this. How come you, everybody has seen these iconic pictures of a little ape becoming a bigger ape, becoming a bigger ape, becoming a human? Now that seems logical, seems plausible, but all things that are logical, all things that are plausible are not necessarily true. Yeah. And I always wonder about this. Why? Why? Don't evolutionists, when they show you this iconic idea of the little ape becoming people, why don't they show you the little fish walking out of the water that became <laughs> exactly. the ape? Of course. <laughs> because if they showed you that, you'd think it was a joke. <laughs> but what's really interesting to me is that if we go back 2,300 years ago, Greek philosophers who were evolutionists taught fish walked out of the water mm -hmm. and became people. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the same evolutionary lie that they're teaching today. Yeah. It may be more sophisticated in the way they present it, but it's exactly the same story. It hasn't changed in 2,300 <clears throat> years. And, of course, they've got some serious problems with the fish walking out of the water that became people because, <laughs> you know, which one? You know, uh, for a long time they said it was the coelacanth. Now, the coelacanth, the lobed-finned fish, supposedly evolved during the Devonian period, supposedly 360 to 410 million years ago. Um, known from the fossil record, uh, easily identifiable. And the evolution said, well, it evolved, you know, back in this period of the age of fishes. And then a hundred million, suppose, years ago or whatever, it supposedly walked out of the water using these little tiny fins like little tiny legs that the, well, it has an air bladder inside the fish. Yeah. This fish actually goes up and down in the water like a submarine. It can actually expand or contract this air bladder. Mm -hmm. And that causes the buoyancy to change like a submarine. Now, first of all, I think that's a pretty interesting design feature. That is indeed, yes. Pretty clever. It is. Uh, but they said, well, this air bladder evolved into the first lung and that this became the first land creature to walk on Earth. Now, uh, they said that this fish had become then extinct 70 million years ago, that there hadn't been a live silicanth on Earth for 70 million years. Mm -hmm. And yet in December 1938, we find them alive in the Comoros <laughs> Islands in the Indian, western Indian Ocean, just north of Madagascar. Uh -huh. And 60 years later, 1998, we find them alive off the coast of Indonesia, 5,000 miles away wow. from where the first population was found alive. Incredible. And, and so it has never changed. It looks exactly like the fossils yeah. that are supposed to be hundreds of millions of years old. Mm. And so they said, well, we had the wrong fish. <laughs> <clears throat> so what happens then is in April of 2006, uh, they say, Eureka, we have found it, the Tiktaalik rosier. And this is a fossil fish that was found up on Ellesmere Island, north of Canada. Uh, this is north of the Northwest Territory. <laughs> it's pretty far north. And uh, they found this, and it's a fish with a relatively flat head. And uh, we only found bits and pieces of a few specimens, and the largest one is the incomplete skull and the front half of the fish. And so we have a bit of the spine, we have the two fins in the front and so forth. We never found the back end. And they said, this was the fish that walked out of the water and turned into people. But as we both know, fame is a fleeting thing. <laughs> so in uh, the early part of 2011 in Poland, 
we found the fossil footprints of a creature walking on land that is supposed to be older than the fossil of Tiktaalik rosier. Mm. So now we know it wasn't the Tiktaalik <laughs> rosier, <laughs> but we're sure a fish walked out of the water <coughs> yeah. that became people. So now Very we're cute. wanting you to give us money so we can go find it. Yes. So th that's the first thing. Yeah. Next, let's think about this. When evolutionists attempt to prove evolution, <laughs> They invariably, now there are various things they'll say, various proofs, but invariably uh, their favorite method of proof is the second worst method of proof in science. It's called the proof by ranking, mm. R-A-N-K-I-N-G. <clears throat> now to rank something means to put it in a logical order or a logical sequence. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter whether it's butterflies, tomatoes, dinosaurs, mm -hmm. people, this is their favorite method of proof, but it is the second worst method of proof in science. And so what do they do? They line things up by size and shape and claim that one came from another. Now, understand that much of the evidence which evolutionists have claimed in the past for human evolution has been disproven and even thrown out by evolutionists. Mm -hmm. Even the great Lucy has now gone out of favor. Yeah, of course. But, but we had frauds, hoaxes, mm -hmm. uh, Piltdown Man, yeah. Nebraska Man, yeah. Java Man, yep. which were all hoaxes. all hoaxes. Though Java Man was reclassified Homo erectus instead of Pithecanthropus erectus. <laughs> um, and now lumped in with another one, uh, Peking Man, because we now know that that, that really isn't uh, an evolved human from Asia. Um, those bones have now been lumped into Homo erectus. And what you find is that Homo erectus is like this garbage can, circular filing bin, file 13 mm. of evolutionary <laughs> anthropologists. And anytime they find something that they're positive has to do with human evolution from apes to people, but can't identify it as anything yeah. else, it's Homo erectus. And of course, then you find uh, fossils of real apes and you find fossils of real people. And they try to construct this, this <coughs> linear logical concept of human evolution. Now the proof by ranking is the second worst method of proof in science. It is amazing they even use it. Uh, what they do is this. They, they take the skull of, say, a gibbon, the skull of a chimpanzee, the skull of an orangutan, the skull of a gorilla, the skull of a human, and they make the most meticulous measurements you have ever seen in your life. I mean, they make this look incredibly unscientific. I mean, you need to be so impressed. Yeah. yeah. But imagine. once they have done that, then they simply line them up by size and shape. Now, this proof by ranking is ridiculous. Um, think with me for a moment. Uh, if you had a room with a uh, hundred people in it, any, yeah. any just group of hundred, <clears throat> and I were to ask them to stand up, and I were to rank them, put them in a logical order or sequence by their height. Yeah. I don't care how old they are, yep. don't care the gender, just, just the height. We have some children, we have some adults and so forth. And so we start with the shortest person in the room at one end and the tallest person in the room kind of down here with me in that area and we line them up by height. Now what two things would I have proven scientifically? Well, I would have proven that people come in different heights. Yeah. And I would have it proven I have the intelligence to put them in a rank, yes. logical order, yeah. or sequence. But I would not have proved anything else scientifically. No. And I can take the same group of 100, do exactly the same thing, but change the rule. Let's yeah. say this time I take the same 100 people, no changes, but this time I put them in a rank, logical order, sequence by the month and the day of their birth only. I don't care how old you are, mm -hmm. I don't care how tall you are, I don't care what your gender is, you know, I don't care what year you were born. This has nothing to do with your age, just the month and day you were born. So I line you up January 1 down here through December 31 down there, right? Now once I have done that, <coughs> what two things have I proven scientifically? I have proven people are born on different days yeah. of the year and I have the intelligence to do it. <laughs> but in either case, ranking people by their height or ranking people by the month and day of their birth, did I prove anything about their heritage? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely right. Did I prove that any two of them are married? Nope. Did I prove that any of them are father and son? Nope. Mother and daughter? Nope. 
aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins? No. I have proved absolutely nothing about their heritage. And if you think with me for just a moment, if you were, say, go out in the woods, find a dead animal, the skeleton, you know, uh, deer, whatever, uh, could I scientifically prove that the creature, the skeleton of which I now find, had offspring? No. No. You find a skeleton, you can't even prove it had children, correct? <laughs> right. So this proof by ranking proves absolutely nothing yeah. about heritage. I mean, if you think about it, if I put a unicycle next to a bicycle, next to a motorcycle, <clears throat> next to an automobile, next to a lorry, did I just prove that lorries evolved from unicycles? <laughs> they did not. <laughs> but that's a logical order or sequence. Yeah. And so this proof by ranking proves absolutely nothing. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> I try to tell people, don't ever allow these evolutions to deceive you again. And again, it doesn't matter whether it's roses or butterflies or dinosaurs mm -hmm. or people. This is their favorite method of proof. And, and we have all today seen special effects movies. And I think you will agree, I certainly would, the technology today <coughs> is just incredible. Mm, yes. You know, I mean, some of the new special effects movies, it, this is not 1938 black and white uh, claymation yeah, anymore, sure. you know. And so um, we've all seen on TV movies uh, the morphing of one thing to another, the changing of a human into an animal, or an mm -hmm. animal into a human, or one human into mm -hmm. another human, and so forth. And today it looks so real. I mean, you and I know it's technology, you and I know it's fiction, but, yeah. but when you see it, it looks so real, you can buy into it for the right purposes convention. of the movie, yeah. right? But you, you go out the door, you know it was fiction. Yep. Now think with me for a second. Because I want to make sure nobody is deceived by these people again. When they put the skull of a gibbon, chimpanzee, orangutan, gorilla, and a human next to each other, and they say to you, you see how one evolved yeah, into yeah, the next, yeah. the answer is yes. Yes, I do see it. If I fill in the blanks with my own imagination. That's right. See, if you make a special effects movie in your head, and you fill in the blanks with your own imagination, you can see it. But the true answer is no. I see five objects lined up by size and shape, but that proves nothing that one came from the other. Yeah. And, and indeed, I, I make a proposition to people. I'm, I'm not a betting man, so this is not a bet, mm -hmm. but a proposition. Okay. Here's my proposition. You give me one skull each of a thousand real different animals. So you give me the skull of a rat and the skull of a dog and the skull of a horse and chimpanzee. Um, but you give me one skull each of a thousand real different animals. And I will prove to you using this method of proof that apes did not evolve into people. <laughs> what really happened was apes evolved into whales. <laughs> or I can pick the skulls out of the line and I can rearrange them in such a way as to prove to you that apes did not evolve into people. What really happened was apes evolved into giraffes <laughs> or elephants or anything you want. Yeah. Because I can pick and choose the skulls, yep. put them in a logical order right. or sequence. And this, this proof by ranking is really stage magic. It's illusion. Yeah. It's deception. Yeah. Now, I, I'm not equating it to black magic. Please understand that. Yep, yep, but, sure. but, but white magic, stage magic, is illusion. Yep. And so they deceive you like a magician into believing that one changed into the other because they're causing your mind to fill in the blanks with your own mm. imagination. And then you see it. Mm -hmm. But it's illusion. It's deception. And that's all it is. And so their favorite method of proof doesn't work. Yep. I find it interesting. Um, of course, Dr. Richard Leakey, working in Africa, found Skull 1470, as it's referred to in the literature, yep. um, and said it looked very human and, and gave it the name, uh, put it in the genus Homo for man. Um, and he was interviewed about this discovery. Now, we have to remember who he is. His wife, doctor in ev human evolution, he has a doctorate in human evolution, but his parents were Dr. Lewis and Mary Leakey, PhDs in human evolution. I mean, look at his pedigree. Yes. Now, his parents working under grants from the National Geographic uh, said, back in the 50s and 60s, that they had proven that people evolved from apes 1.5 million years ago. Mm. 
Their son comes along, 1972, finds skull 1470, says it looks very human, puts it in the genus Homo, not our, you know, it's not putting it with the apes, it's putting it with humans. Um, and he said it was 2.8 million years old when he found it. Yeah. Later he said he made a mistake, it was 2.4. Okay. Later, the National Geographic said it was 2.0. <laughs> uh, I went uh, in my mission work, I do mission work, I've been to South Africa three times. And I went uh, my last mission trip to South Africa, I was in Johannesburg, and I drove out to Maropang, which is where the government of South Africa has built this museum to the cradle of mankind, mm -hmm. promoting evolution, evolution, pure evolution. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a photograph where they say it's 1.9 million. Wow. But I read a recent uh, research article that says it was 1.8. <laughs> so the older the skull gets, the you know the younger it is. <laughs> and, and think about why would you intentionally subtract one million years from two point eight to one point eight? Yeah, yeah. Why would you intentionally subtract yeah. one million years slowly and gradually from the age of the skull? Yeah. Well, the obvious answer is to make it fit. Yeah. Because his parents Perhaps. said. That they had proven humans had evolved 1.5 million years ago into humans, but he finds something twice as old, 2.8 million, uh, and says it's human. Uh, so what they've done is they've reduced <laughs> yeah, yeah. the age slowly and gradually yeah. a million years to make it fit their theory. Wow. And then, again, uh, he was interviewed, of course, by the National Geographic concerning the discovery in 1972. And so in 1973, the National Geographic publishes an interview with Dr. Richard Leakey about the find, because you know it takes months for this stuff to get mm -hmm. you know, cycled through the you know, monthly issues and so on. And he actually said in an interview that the discovery of Skull 1470, supposedly 2.8 million years old at the time of the article, mm -hmm. um, proved, leaves in ruins the concept that all fossils can put, be put in a logical order of evolution. Now, think about this. And he also said in the article, either you toss out this physical evidence or you toss out the theories of my parents. Yes. Yeah. Because he's finding a skull twice as old, apparently mm -hmm. human at the time. Now, there's a lot of conjecture about that today. So he has thrown his parents under the bus. <laughs> and he's just said our favorite method of proof doesn't work. And so even he understood that ranking doesn't work. Yeah. So here's a preeminent evolutionist himself admitting the problems of what I'm talking about. And so I just want to make sure that evolutionists never deceive you again. Yeah. This proof by ranking is a useless methodology. It doesn't prove a thing. Of course. And, and leading into the, the second question, then uh, if, if uh, supposedly we evolved from apes, uh, why are there apes around today? Yeah, and, and that is a question people often ask, and there's a really good answer to it uh, from an evolutionary viewpoint. From a creation viewpoint, there's no answer to it at all. No, yeah. but, but because I believe that God created everything after its own kind, mm -hmm. reproduces after its own kind, that God created apes as apes and people as people. The fact that we have a similar structure doesn't mean that we came one from the other. You know, porpoises and whales have similar structures. Now, of course, evolutionists would say that they are related and, and evolved from each other. But the fact of the matter is that similarity of appearance does not mean that one came from the other. Mm -hmm. And, uh, for instance, we, we have hands and all these digits, the pendactyl pattern, which is rather ubiquitous in nature. Uh, but in, the, in an ape, they do not have a true prehensile thumb. They have something similar to our hands, but the thumbs are not in the right place for those, as mm -hmm. ours are. Um, and you see that the same bones, only changing in length and slight changes in shape, but the exact same bones in a human hand are also seen in a bat's wing and a whale's flipper, a horse's leg, uh, because this is one really good design from yeah, a creator yeah, god yeah. who can then, like any good engineer, and I, mm -hmm. I teach this in engineering universities. Like any good engineer can take one really good design mm -hmm. and then modify it to do different things. Yes. And the pendactyl pattern is created by God, designed by God to grasp things. That's uh, the, my terminology, to mm -hmm. grasp. Mm -hmm. Because the human hand, I can grasp a glass yeah. or yeah. Some, a tool. Mm -hmm. uh, but a bat's wing grasps mm -hmm. air. Right. And a whale's flipper grasps water if you will allow that analogy. And so 
God has one really good design, can mm -hmm. modify it for many different purposes. Mm -hmm. And that's why we see it used throughout nature. And it has nothing to do with the fact that we have a common ancestor, which is evolution. It's because yeah, we have a common yeah. designer, which is God. Now, remember, I used to be an evolutionist. Yeah. I used to teach evolution. And so if you ask me this question, which is so common, uh, I know the answer that the evolutionist would give you because I used to teach it. <laughs> you know? And so you ask that question, and as an evolutionist, I know the knee-jerk reaction. So here, here's the answer that the evolutionist will give you. But you must listen carefully to the answer. Right. Very carefully. Uh, when evolutionist says, or somebody else says, well, you know, uh, we have apes today, and we have people, um, and you say, the Christian might say, well, if people evolve from apes, why don't we still have the, you know, why do we have these apes? The answer goes like this. Well, you see, we did not evolve from the apes that exist today. We evolved from an unknown, yeah. common oh, ancestor. Yes. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't evolve from the apes that exist today. We evolved from unknown. an unknown no. common mm -hmm. ancestor. <laughs> you see, we're sure it happened, but we can't prove it. But we do want you to give us more tax money so that we can go out and look for it. Mm -hmm. Because the only way we can make a living is if you pay us to go out and dig in the ground. <laughs> and, and this gets really interesting because just recently, now, Lucy was found by Johansson in 1975. Yeah. Donald Johansson, when he found Lucy, said that she was a female, standing three to three and a half foot tall, living three to three and a half million supposed years ago, and was bipedal leading to humans. And for, for decades, Lucy has been kind of in the, this road yeah, to man yeah. concept. Now, even recently, though, Lucy's been kind of fading out. <laughs> You see, by the 1980s, we already knew she had curved hand bones and curved foot bones of an arboreal ape. She was a tree dweller. Yeah. You see, the Lucy skeleton that, that Johansson found doesn't have really any significant number of hand or foot bones. But today we have found more of the same creature, and we now know it had curved mm. hand bones, curved foot bones. It was an arboreal ape. It didn't walk flat-footed. So now Lucy's pushed out of the scenery here, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but when they this this question about you know why don't we have apes and people and so forth, mm -hmm. and I said unknown common ancestor. So what happens is they find these things, and then the, then the, what the public isn't aware is that over a period of time they get discredited and pushed into the background, but they still get printed in the textbooks, right? Now the reason I brought up Lucy is because just recently. We found a bone that goes in the upper part of your foot, the long bone yeah, in the top yeah. of your foot, that is absolutely human. No question about it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But was found in the same layer as Lucy bones were found in the Old Dubai Gorge in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. But evolutionists know that people didn't exist at that time because they know we've only been around as humans for a million years or so, and they know that Lucy's three to four million years old in terms of when she supposedly lived, or her species. Uh, and so because the bone was in that layer, they know it cannot possibly come from a human, and they have classified it as coming from a Lucy species. But it is obviously human, and any anatomist would tell you it's human. Now, of course, the problem is they're not thinking. This is a bone from a human being that lived prior to the flood of Noah, who drowned in the flood of Noah. The body articula you know, is articulated, disarticulates in water uh, under decomposition. This bone floats around, gets incorporated in a layer of wet mud, sedimentary rock, along with some ape you know, fossils mm -hmm. or that became fossils. And that's how it got there. But of course, since they don't believe the Bible, they'll never come to that conclusion. <laughs> And they will refute it. And so today they want your tax money to go out there and dig up more bones so, so they can finally piece the story together because they know it's true by faith. Yeah. yeah. Evolution is a religion. <clears throat> I, I told you I'm a recovering government school graduate. <laughs> and, and so uh, they are presupposing that their evolutionary view is correct. Yeah. And they're arranging things in that, that preconceived concept of theirs. When instead of doing, you know, good science, good science would be say, I found this bone here. No problems. Document that. 
And obviously it's human, period. Instead, they change the interpretation of it to fit their paradigm. Yeah. Because all their evidence must fit into an evolutionary time frame. And they are quite willing to make up evidence, like Piltdown Man, uh, <laughs> Java Man. They are willing to misinterpret the evidence, such as Peking Man, uh, Lucy, etc., uh, Skull 1470. <clears throat> And they will do anything and everything necessary to deceive the public into believing the story, the fairy tale for adults that they tell concerning human evolution. Yeah. But the more we find, the more we realize that humans didn't evolve from apes. We have a similarity of appearance, similarity of form, mm -hmm. similarity of function. But I would remind people that the similarity of function doesn't make us spiritually equivalent either. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know, we have a spirit. So we're a body, soul, and spirit. The ape simply has a body and a soul. They are not eternal beings. They don't have an eternal nature. Uh, they cannot get saved, etc. And uh, for instance, when they die, according to Ecclesiastes 3, yeah. their bi body dies <clears throat> biologically, and the soul goes into the ground, and they cease to exist. They are temporal beings. They are here yeah. for a temporary amount of time. But as Ecclesiastes says, when humans die, we die biologically. <coughs> our body goes into the ground. Same fate is what it says in the Bible. Same fate as the animals. But because our soul is united with an eternal spirit, we go on into an eternity future. Amen. And the question must be then, where are we going to spend that, that eternity, eternity future? That during this lifetime, we have a choice as to where we will spend that yes. eternity. Yes. And we are not evolved from apes. And genetic studies recently have proven categorically we are not genetically related. Yeah. You know, we are not 1% different. <laughs> Uh, the fact of the matter is that, um, that the whole thing is just, again, a fairy tale for adults. But we now know categorically that we are very distinct genetically from apes. And we are not 1% somewhere. Uh, we only make 29% the same proteins. We, you know, we have less DNA than they do. They have more DNA than we do. <laughs> and uh, if, if we evolve from them, then we're a degeneration. Incredible, incredible, Dr. Mike Murray. And of course, what, what you just said, although evolutionists do not like uh, creationists attributing this, this to them, nevertheless, it is a truth. They have tremendous faith to, to because you need faith to believe in yes. an unknown common ancestor. Right. <laughs> Dr. McMurdry, thank you very much. Join with us again uh, in part four, where we'll be asking Dr. McMurdry uh, some more questions. And don't forget, to visit the website at creationworldview.org where you will receive uh, uh, a lot more information.